Okay, we can go ahead and get started. So this is the second call of the month for the telecom user group. Um, this calls on the third Monday at 11 UTC or 7 p.m. China Sand Time. The first call is at 1500 UTC or 8 a.m. So not as, I guess, friendly for the Asia Pacific time. Um, if you are available to join or you'd like to put some notes, uh, please do on this. I um, definitely want to try to uh, collaborate across both of the times. So um, <clears throat> a few upcoming events. Uh, the main one would be uh, around KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, and the there's several co-located events um, right before KubeCon on Monday, November 18th. And there's a birds of a feather face-to-face -face for the telecom user group that will be on Wednesday, November 20th. We're also planning to do a collaborative set of meetings with the Linux Foundation CNTT um, face to face meetings. There was a lot of meetings and uh, good conversations at Open Network Summit. And we're hoping to carry some of that into the KubeCon timeframe. So one of them is planned on the Monday, um, November 18th. We'll have another one probably the next day or the following day. These will be a couple of hours um, besides any other um, ad hoc meetings. But we'd like to carry some of those conversations that we had at Open Network Summit on. So if, if you're available in San Diego, um, please hey, Taylor. reach out. Yes. Uh, this is Dan Kahn from CNCF. I just wanted to interject that we do almost uh, have those time set and we're going to be emailing them to the list and posting them on Slack and such as soon as we do. It's going to be um, Monday afternoon, so after the co-located events, uh, probably overlapping with the, uh, with the lightning talks. And then it's likely the second one will be Wednesday afternoon. And I'll just point Sounds out that good. the normal KubeCon sessions are 35 minutes. And so uh, the request for these was two hours each, which is uh, much more challenging to schedule, but we are going to accommodate that in order to try and allow this joint meeting of the telecom user group and CNTT. And uh, we're not going to be, it's not going to be posted in the schedule, but uh, we do, we will be, uh, sharing the notes here, we encourage folks to attend. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. All right. Um, I think that's uh, it for the upcoming events right now that are on the list. We'll probably be adding some more here um, by the next time that we get together. Um, Dan, did you have anything else specific or do you want me to, uh, your name is on the list, but nothing here. Um, I'm not in a quiet person. spot yet. But um, okay. I, I will mention that we'll, we'll also be doing pre-meetings for KubeCon Amsterdam. But if we could um, introduce Alex Alkever to the group. Uh, he got up very early in the morning in California to talk yeah. about the work he's doing, and he's going to have a draft to share in just the next couple of days with this group. Sounds good. He'll be... Um, he's, he's listed. So, Alex, um, if... You want to go? You can go ahead and give an update on the tech white paper. Uh, thank you, Taylor. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes, you sound sound great. Cool, perfect. Um, so uh, 
I uh, went ahead and collated a lot of uh, different things that um, so a lot of what Taylor had written in some parts of the outline and created a chapter one uh, a sample chapter. This is uh, that incorporates a sort of cloud native for telecom for telecom 101. Um, there's, I think, a little bit of overlap with what you're working on, Tomas, but not too much. Um, and Dan and I are in the process of just making sure that it really uh, maps to what community sentiment probably will be, and then we should be sharing it out pretty shortly so the community can have a look at it and uh, and weigh in and uh, you know add add their own inputs. Um, this is just a uh, sort of a version one, uh, so we're happy to have uh, suggestions and changes. Of course, in fact, I'm sure that they will be they will make it far better. Um, but it's basically covers uh, it's a well Taylor it's based in part on some of the things that you wrote some of the uh, the bullets on uh, on um, uh, you know on how OSI layers apply to uh, to cloud native when you look at more than just layer seven um, and also some uh, just basic translation from uh, VNFs to CNFs uh, in, in a few other items like that, but we should be sharing this uh, you know, the next, the next day, I believe. Dan's looking at it, and I'm trying to make sure I have everything in shape on it. Uh, Alex, this is Tomasz. Uh, I think some on the meeting might not know, but uh, Gergen and myself have also started working on, you know, the, the ideal CNF part. So I, I, we would really appreciate, Alex, your feedback on that, you know, which are the parts which might overlap and which are the parts which don't overlap, so we should concentrate on those. I think time is running short and, and, and I would prefer to concentrate on the chapters and on the parts where, you know, we don't have any overlaps. I totally understand. Um, I, I think that, uh, I'll, I'll check with Dan, but we should be able to give you um, the, the document um, in, in just a second, uh, probably okay. in a day or so. so and sorry yeah. to hold you up. I, no, I, no, that's that's perfect. That's perfect. And I, I'll be on a business trip anyway. So, okay. Thank, thank you for your patience. Uh, and if anyone has any questions about it, feel free to find me in Slack and ask me. Um, or uh, if, um, any questions right now, I'm happy to answer them. Hello? Okay. Hello? Yes? Yeah. So uh, I, want, I wonder, uh, uh, what's the what's the content of uh, your this uh, first uh, chapter? Because uh, I, I don't know where to to find your content. Uh, it's totally not your fault that it, you can't find it. It's we're not published yet. Um, Dan and I are uh -huh. just going over it very quickly to make sure that what's in there maps to what the community probably would be interested in. Because I'm still new to this, um, but we should be posting this. Uh, for everyone to review in Slack, ideally later today or tomorrow or so. Um, yeah, the, ba the basic content though, uh, you know, it, there's a bunch of pieces. I mean, one is essentially an introduction, talking a little bit about how Bell Canada is using CNFs right now. Uh, we had a very good conversation with Daniel Bernier. Uh, we'll be, we also spoke to uh, Rakuten. We're probably going to speaking to Jeffrey uh, Salens from Charter. Uh, and then there's a bit about what is cloud native, um, which just in case somebody is coming to this who really doesn't understand or hasn't is very new to cloud native, just to help them as an introduction, um, a definition of cloud native systems, uh, and then uh, talking a bit about infrastructure deployment and configuration of cloud native systems, because for the most part, uh, you know, outside of telecoms, um, infrastructure is something that people don't think as much about around cloud native, unless you're a cloud service provider or a cloud company. Um, usually people think about it above that level. Um, and then some discussion of cloud native functions, uh, a bit of history about virtualization for telecommunications companies. Uh, and then the last piece is design principles for cloud native telecommunications infrastructure and applications. 
Uh, so Tomas, I don't think we go as detailed as you do on CNFs specifically, um, although there is definitely um, a bit of overlap between the two. So we should be showing that, sharing that with you very quickly. I think I think that's that's okay. I think our priority should be that we we sort of merge the two efforts efficiently, so we know how we can help best your effort, and then we can have a common plan so that we deliver on time. Agreed. I think that's perfect. All right. Um, so, Thomas uh, or Jorge, would either of you would like to talk about the uh, ideal CNF white paperwork? Sure, I can. I can bring up the uh, you know at least the the contents that we want to put down in the coming days. Uh, I'm not sure if Gerge is online. Let's check. Gerge, are you online? No, it doesn't seem like so. Uh, please bear with me until I manage to share my screen here. Um, All right, so does anyone know where do I need to click here on Zoom to share my screen? Ah, yeah, got it. <laughs> Just let me know if you see it on, on the screen. Looks good, Thomas. Yeah, cool. Uh, so some high level chapters and, and uh, as per usual, you see a name next to the chapter and that person should be responsible for doing the chapter. So right now the work is divided between uh, Gerge and myself. Uh, and the main main topics are infrastructure decoupling. What do we need to do? I mean, the first, uh, the, the whole thing is about, hey, we need to re-architect these applications if we want to call them CNFs. Uh, and then we have the CNCF cloud native definition, which should fully apply, but needs to be a little bit interpreted correctly for telco and, and, and the paper should give you hints and help about how to interpret that correctly for telco. Uh, some basic principles, one is the decoupling from the infrastructure to make the CNF in a way that has the least amount of dependencies on the infrastructure. Then what do we need to make sure that we have the right orchestration and automation capabilities? Uh, what sort of surroundings shall the CNF depend on for those? And how do we uh, extend uh, lifecycle management capabilities of Kubernetes if necessary for stateful services? Uh, some, some words about microservices, you know, what are microservices in a telco context? Uh, what is the right level of modularity? What are the benefits of modularity? Uh, what are the pros and the cons of taking things apart into smaller pieces in the telco context? And what are the typical communication patterns? Then about stateless handling and how do we implement this considering that most of the telco applications are inherently stateful. This is about separating state storage and, and, and business logic uh, benefits and, and, and how shall this be done in practice. And then last but not least networking, uh, how to use standard Kubernetes networking as much as possible, uh, how to fit in into an existing uh, network with existing VNFs and PNFs, what sort of extra requirements does that put on the system? Uh, and then some examples about what can be done in including Multus, Denim, uh, and so on. So I cannot guarantee that everything you see here would get into the final text, but these are sort of the thoughts uh, we had at the beginning of this and uh, as indicated we'll start working on these chapters now 
and uh, try to do something by the end of the month, then I expect a very close cooperation with Alex and the community for the community in terms of, of feedback. And, and of course, every input is welcome here. Uh, but more like uh, Alex has started on, on some work on, on the white paper already from a different angle and we need to marry the two angles together. Any questions or comments? Hi, got a good drink. Hi, I just finished going through the chapters of the ideal CNF document. Oh, sorry. sorry for being late. <laughs> no, don't worry. I think I did justice to, to at least what we have so far. And I think what we, what we discussed is that Alex already started working on something and, and is, is in the process of talking to operators. So uh, we need to figure out if we have an overlap between his work and our work and how can we resolve that overlap as fast as possible so we don't do any double work. But any immediate feedback from the community? Hi, um, just one question. Um, the content that you guys are working on here, um, is that intended to go into Alex's white paper or are they being treated as separate streams? I'd like to, like if we could roll everything into one white paper, but without seeing his white paper, I can't cannot say to a hundred percent whether that's a yes or a no. But the intention is to try to fit it into the same white paper. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So I don't know, Gerge, if you want to say a few words about this or. I think I basically will run through it and there seems to be no further questions. No, no, I'm okay. I don't want to repeat what you just said. Okay, cool. So Taylor, that was all from us. Sounds great. Uh, and one one question, one, 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 sorry, one, one question to, to you and, and to the community, I think. Um, how shall we do this? I can share this document with the community right away, or maybe it would be more practical to share it once we have sort of merged this together with what Alex has. Any preferences there? I think that as is, it could be shared. We could upload it to the, the Telcom User Group Google Drive and mm -hmm. share, and then share that um, share the shared link to on the mailing list and then Slack. I think it would be good to get some comments and feedbacks directly on this. Okay, so um, Taylor, can I ask you to do that? Because I don't. So if I share the document with you, would you be so kind to do that and share it with me in the minutes? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll contact you separately on Slack for this. Sounds good. Thank you. And, and uh, Tom, sorry. Uh, Sorry, Thomas. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, Tom, Thomas, I just wanted to say thank you for your patience. Uh, we'll be sharing very quickly. The, the main reason we're not sharing immediately is just because I am so new to this. I just wanted, Dan just wanted to make sure that all the pieces uh, were, you know, made sense or were, were correct in, the, in thinking about cloud native. Um, you know, for from a community standpoint, we, we should be sharing it very quickly. Thank you for your patience. Mm, sure, no, no, no problem. And and if you feel like you would, you would need a meeting, a short meeting between the three of us, or maybe with a larger group group to discuss the way forward. You know where to find me. Yeah, and I think we probably will want that in the next uh, in the next week for sure. Sure, uh, I, I, I'm traveling to the People's Republic of China during uh, this week, but I'll be back by Friday. Okay. Well, I'm in California time also, so uh, that mm. might, might even make it easier for the meeting. Yep. Okay. Yeah, uh, Thomas. So I, I have a, a question that uh, I wonder why why do you um, want to put this uh, chapter uh, separately from uh, the our currently the white papers uh, doc? 
the, the, the only reason I have started a separate Google document for this is because, you know, I want a clean sheet of paper without 10,000 comments and, and just <laughs> put down my thoughts, you know, so that's because there were many, many things, many, many comments and good discussions there. I didn't want to, to inject all this. In fact, I started and I realized it looks very, very old, and I knew that Alex has started with something, and this will probably have to be merged with that one anyway. So to make it make the merge easier, I started a new document. But what I do here and what we have been doing here does nothing to invalidate the existing work on that other work, white paper. It's just trying to get the work done in a focused way because we have a deadline. Yeah, okay. but. I think maybe we need to, you know, maybe try this uh, for each uh, chapter, or maybe that's, uh, you know, the, the the original doc is already being polluted by all those uh, comments. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think that's maybe that's the way forward. Maybe we should we should, you know, uh, the the plan was anyway to have smaller white papers, but release them more frequently. So so maybe the next step could be to to look at on one of these meetings or maybe on the face-to-face -face meetings the existing white paper topics or maybe bring some more up and and together figure out what shall be the next topic that we attack and then we break that out and we work on that separately yeah so maybe for the uh, the original doc maybe we can just put some uh, links there so that people can uh, check the at uh, the index so they can go to the mm -hmm. details for uh, yeah, I, I think I think that's a good suggestion. So I wait for Taylor to put this into the right place, and then I will I will go in and edit the the other white paper, put the link in into that. So whoever goes to that white paper will find this one as well. Yes, great. We're probably at a point where we need to update the GitHub Telecom User Group page to link to multiple white papers. We do have the Google, a Google Drive that has a lot of other documents. So I'll put that on my list to update the Google uh, GitHub as well as a few other places so that we can have an index out to the multiple docs. Yeah, and I, and I think another thing which we might try, maybe not with this one, but maybe with the next white paper, is that we try using GitHub itself and use markup as opposed to Google Drive, see if that works better or not. I like it for the PRs and everything. The, the good thing with the Google Docs is being able to uh, edit at the same time if you're work if you're collaborating with someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I know more about Google Drive and less about GitHub, so it was just a, an idea. And maybe for collaborative work, it's better to 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 use Google Docs. I you know I'm just trying to find the best option since Google Drive. I've seen some complications with with many, especially those working for Verizon. Um, they had trouble accessing the document using their corporate email. Absolutely. Um, I guess on that, if if folks could let us know if you're having a hard time getting access to any of these documents. And then we'll try to find a workaround. Any other questions or feedback on the white paper topic topics? All right, um, Michael um, Peterson, are you on the call? Yes, I am. I think you had a few updates on the development side on the CNF test bed. Yeah, so so I guess to do it somewhat briefly, we've been working on some some more use cases. We have this gateway router use case from NSM that we're trying to incorporate 
Um, and I've been talking to Nikolai, that's, that's part of the development team um, for NSM as well um, on, 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 on this, because previously when we were using the universal CNF that's being maintained and developed by, by NSM, we had some issues with external interfaces that were connected through DBDK. Um, and we, after some debugging, we found that the main issue with that was the, the Alpine image, even if we're running that in privileged mode, um, the sys directory in the, the container was still being mounted as read only, which had some complications with how DBDK tries to, to use VFIO bound interfaces. So by remounting the, the sys directory in as read or read write when we're running the container, we're actually able to, to have much better control of the physical interfaces. Um, so there are some updates coming to the use cases that are related to this and otherwise um, we're just making sure that everything is easy to deploy. So like a one click deployment using Helm, making sure that we have some documentation. Um, and I think that's it from the, the example side. Um, from the infrastructure side, <clears throat> um, we're making sure that everything is, is fully updated. So we're using the newest version of VPP when, wherever possible. Um, I think it's 19081. Um, and similarly, based on some recent discussions, we're updating the uh, package generator infrastructure. So NFV bench to, to the newest version and making sure that we have some, some better documentation and some better, I guess, guidelines for how to do the, the benchmarks. And similarly, we're running a, uh, once we get this in place, we'll be running a full sweep of benchmarks. So we're making sure we have some up-to-date, I guess, um, reference results that we can share. I think that's all for, from my side. Is there any updates on the SRV and I guess uh, some of this work on Multis? So we have other... the example um, in place for the SRIOV uh, network device plugin um, that allows us to, to um, have some better control over the SRIOV interfaces handed to each container. Um, and that, that all seems to work. Um, we had some issues with this in, in the NSM example. I think the one that would be showcased at ONS. Um, but with this, this new change to, to remounting the sys um, directory, um, we should be able to use this um, together and create like a bigger use case that utilizes both the plugin and NSM at the same time. For Multis, um, I still have a bit of trouble there since deploying it and following the guidelines. For some reason, I'm still not able to see the interfaces inside of the container. Um, I have a ticket opened at the at the Multis GitHub page, and I'll try to reach out to some of the developers during this week directly to try and see if we can get some some support on that one. Um, so hopefully we can we can get that sorted soon as well. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, no problem. Any questions or feedback um, for the CNF test bed or the items that Michael talked about? All right. So there's um this is the roadmap for the CNF test bed uh, kind of going forward and some of these were mentioned with the gateway update we'll be able to focus on more of the NSM use cases that'll take advantage of that one um, one of the items that uh, we're targeting um, and hoping to have in place would be some type of integration with the OpenSAC cluster and a Kubernetes cluster. And 
We have a few options on that. We've been able to deploy open site clusters with VPP networking as the VPP being a high speed V switch, as well as the OVS and um, other choices for OpenSec. And there's been some issues with using GRE uh, gateways um, on the OpenSec side when we're doing VPP. Um, if there's anyone that's familiar with the VPP networking, we have um, have some open bugs that we're trying to resolve on that. Uh, we may end up with a OVS endpoint to start um, for this. Um, we would want to get VPP in place before benchmarking, but from a functional side, the idea is to have some type of network function or set of uh, a chain potentially running on the OpenSec side and another um, set that are running in Kubernetes and being able to connect those, which is indicating uh, what we're seeing at production setups where you may have uh, different vendors running requirements, potentially maybe running something in OpenSec and you're wanting to connect in and run those from Kubernetes workloads. So that's kind of the goal. Um, on that one, we're also working uh, with DanM to get some type of use case. This will probably be updated. It's uh, updated. It's matching SRV use case. We'll have some more specifics on that. Uh, we have some tickets uh, that are going in based on some specifications that we've been working on. You can see in the CNF testbed. And we have a few more in the queue, like the Multis is. Uh, probably be up, updated here since we do have the SRV CNI plugin done. We'll be updating this match, kind of the goals there. All right, I think that's it. So the next uh, Telecom user group meeting. If no one else has any questions, I can move on. One question. One question. This is Tomas um, on, okay. on the on the NSM. Sorry, no. The testbed mm -hmm. roadmap. There was an item on on 5G slash GSM use case, and uh, we have created. At Ericsson, since we are doing a, a, a proof of concept with NSM, we have created a use case description for a 5G use case. So the question is, where where is the meeting to bring it on for discussion, and uh, maybe you know, including it in the roadmap if people think that's a meaningful use case. Um, you know, this is this is Nico from. Uh, the network service mesh. Uh, so uh, tomorrow we have our work group call. Uh, I know that you're going to be traveling. Uh, yeah. That's one of the options. Then on Thursday we also have the CNF. This is actually uh, mm -hmm. Taylor. Um, probably should talk more about it, but there's a CNF Cinco. It's on Thursday uh, afternoon European time. Um, mm -hmm. So. I think the, the tomorrow meeting could potentially be okay if Henrik can participate and maybe bring the bring Roshini or the team with himself. So we already have had kind of created some uh, like empty example of uh, like for based on forge architecture. So it would be interesting to 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 actually um, yeah meet and talk about what you have and how we can proceed with that. So okay, so you can reach out over Slack, or find us on the channels. Um, I can pick okay. you. I don't know. Good. Okay. okay. No, I, I I reach out. I reach out and I make sure that there is someone from our side who can participate. Obviously, I can't Perfect. because it will be in a Perfect. strange, strange situation. I I don't think I would be able to participate at that time. But I talk to Henrik and we we'll, we'll find someone to go to the meeting tomorrow. Yeah, I think as long as we have the invite, I think uh, we can. Uh, so that is it possible to you know, maybe post the, the link into the chat here or something for simplicity's sake? Uh, are you on Slack? 
I am. Yeah, we are. We are okay. on Slack. Okay. You you okay. contact us on Slack then. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Thomas and Nicola. This is uh, Jin Xiang. Uh, cool. Just to follow up. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, just to follow up. Uh, where can I get the uh, details or descriptions of that uh, 5G use case uh, using uh, based on NSM? Uh, is there a description or any details? Resources there, there, is, there is, there is, and we would like to discuss it with NSM first. If if they also think it's a meaningful thing, then we'll make a public document out of it, and then it will be public. Okay, cool. Uh, so otherwise, so far, otherwise so you can contact me. Otherwise, you can contact me directly, and I can talk you through it. But I don't want to go public with it until the, the NSM community says yes, this is this is all right. Gotcha. Thanks. I w I'd love to get something on the roadmap, and we do have a, a spec area that I had mentioned earlier, a spec board, and um, if depending on how far along it is, we can either add something here and build out a Google Doc, um, or we can, um, here's one of the examples for Dana. Mm -hmm. Where we uh, we create we created a issue and worked through um, deciding on what we're going to actually build out, and from this we ended up there's actually a Google Doc associated, but we ended up deciding on the use case that we're going to actually implement, and that's what's in progress. So something like that could work as far as something for the CNF test bed. Mm -hmm. I'll post the. Uh, to the network service mesh working group call as well as the CNF testbed and times for the Thursday into the the telecom user group meeting notes. And if anyone would like to join those uh, two calls, they're weekly. Mm -hmm. And we can contain discussions and uh, just ping us in Slack if if you want to set up a the call outside of the working group call to dig into any of this. All right, we will. Thank you. All right, is there anything else? The next Helcom uh, user group meeting is November 4th at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 1500 UTC. So this is the first Monday uh, where it switches uh, to the early, later time. Probably the next one after that um, would would be doing a face to face. Uh, we can f see if we're doing the early morning and check in with folks on that. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks. Cheers.